Ruchem Aboim. Again, welcome to our home. Thank you for attending. Um, so, the lecture this week is called The Messiah, the What If. So, this week on my thoughts, I'd like to examine the concept of the coming of the Messiah. You know, if you've ever heard or read about the coming of the Messiah, well, the inform information can be quite unnerving. The prophecies predict a great war between Gog and Magog the granddaddy of all wars, world chaos, pit pandemics, world recession, and social disorder. You know, it's recorded in the Talmud that the sages stated that they did not wish to live in the era of the Messiah. So how are we supposed to proceed? To begin with, we are not the masters of our own destinies. If you haven't figured it out by now, <laughs> God is in charge. In the end, it'll be what he wants it to be. However, we do have an ace in the hole. We have what's called Hakol Kol Yaakov. The voice is the voice of Yaakov. We have been blessed with the power of prayer. We actually have the ability to change our destiny. There is a precept in Judaism that God never retracts any blessing <clears throat> that he has foretold. On the other hand, any prophecy that is connected to punishment or difficulty, well, that can be diminished or, or even annulled completely. We witness this fact with the story of Jonah and the whale. In the book of Jonah, it states that God Almighty sends Jonah to warn the inhabitants of the city of Nineveh <clears throat> that God is about to destroy their city. Well, upon hearing Jonah's warning, the people, including their king, all repent. We read that though God had intended to destroy the city with all of its inhabitants, God Almighty forgives their sins and does not destroy the city. So let me return to the topic of this, my thoughts. What if? So what if all, the pro all of these prophecies of doom and gloom were a warning for us to change our errant ways and return to the path of God, our Father in Heaven, which He has paid for us? What if these prophecies are, for the most part, only threats or events that have already occurred? What if we are on the threshold of the coming of the Messiah? You know, time and space are limitations that only exist for us in this world. Time and space, however, do not exist for God. He is above them. Well, that being the case, our perception of time and his reality of time may well be totally different. As King David stated in Psalm 90, verse number 4, For a thousand years in your sight are like a yesterday that has passed. There is a belief based on Kabbalah that this whole world exists only in the mind of God. In addition, there is a thought that this world can only exist for two weeks, based on the thought that we are living on Friday of the second week of creation, just before the coming of the Shabbat. The reason that I bring up this point is to propose the possibility that the coming of the Messiah may not be a one-time continuous event, something like one domino falling after the other in close proximity. It may well be a composite of different events that may have occurred in history. An example of this thought can be connected to the story of Purim. If you were to ask people, how many years did the story of Purim take to unfold? Many people would answer you that it was a year, maybe two. The reality is that from the time that the Jews of Shushan participated in the banquet of King Hashverosh, for which they were held accountable until the death of Haman, covered a, sp a span of nine years. We sometimes find it difficult to connect the dots. We often can't see the forest through the trees. We know that one of God's major traits is, is that he is erechapayim, long-suffering. God is in no rush to exact punishment from us. He has all the time in the world, especially when his action will include difficulty and pain to his children. You know, our sages tell us that Yosef's brothers were never punished in their lifetime for the sin of selling him into slavery. Yosef, with his charade, was attempting to rid his brothers of any remnant of their culpability. However, the brothers were looking at Egypt the same way that Shimon and Levi looked at the city of Shechem. Yosef had no alternative but to reveal himself to his brothers. We read in the Musaf service on Yom Kippur 
about the Asura Haruge Malchus, which means the killing of the ten martyrs by the Romans. Had Yosef been allowed to continue his charade just a little longer, it is possible that this incident in the future would never have occurred. In the time frame that existed between the sin of selling Yosef and the punishment occurred some 1,500 years in the future. So what if the coming of the Messiah is not a one-time event in history? What if the coming of the Messiah has and is occurring over the span of time? What if the prophecy of the great world war between Gog and Magog has already happened with the advent of World War II? And what if all the trials and tribulations that we as Jews have experienced throughout history have all been pieces of the jigsaw puzzle that makes up the era of the coming of the Messiah, the final redemption? One of the prophecies of the coming of the Messiah is that before the coming of the Messiah from the house of David and King David, that there will first be a Messiah in the house of Yosef, but that he will die. We've all witnessed <clears throat> that in the year 2000 in the city of Nablus, in Shechem, where Yosef is buried, that on July 10th, in the year 2000, Yosef's grave was profaned by the Arabs living in Nablus. This action could well be viewed as a sort of death of the Messiah of Yosef. You know, we do not direct history, that, and that's God's domain. We have witnessed events in history that were totally unexpected. What if events in history, <clears throat> such as the breakup of the Soviet Union, the unexpected fall of the Berlin Wall, 9-11, COVID, and the massacre of October 7th, among others, or, or even the election of the last three U.S. presidents, all of these events were unnatural in hindsight. We can view them as one long continuous thread that hopefully leads us to the coming of the Messiah. You know, it is said that when Yosef revealed himself to his brothers with the words, Ani Yosef, <clears throat> I am Yosef, all the questions that the brothers had entertained were all answered at once. So too, when God Almighty will declare, Ani Hashem, I am God, then all of the events in world history will then become crystal clear. Just like Yosef and his brothers, everything that he did was for their benefit. Nothing. Nothing that he did was for revenge. So too we need to recognize that we have a loving Father in heaven that loves us dearly. And that all that occurs in our lives is only to bring us closer to the coming of the Messiah and the joy that he will usher in. The situation in Israel today and the worldwide hatred that has surfaced is shocking. Yet no one thought that we could, re we could relive Germany in the 30s. Huh. But yet, here we are. Anti-Semitism is through the roof. The only hope of salvation that we have is God Almighty, our Father in Heaven. There's a states in Psalm 146. Do not place your tr trust in benefactors, in mortal man, for they do not have the ability to bring deliverance. God Almighty has shown us that our salvation will not come from people. It has and always will be directed by God Almighty himself. You know, the Rambam stated that during the high holidays, that one should see the scales of justice as balanced evenly between life and death, between heaven and hell. One more deed, one more deed can tip the scale in favor of one or the other. Not just for each individual personally, but also for the whole world. One deed, one deed may have the power to place the whole world on the side of merit. Or deficit. You know, they tell a story about a king who had besieged a city. So he sent his commandos against the gates of the city, but they were wiped out to the man. So then he sent his cavalry against the gates of the city, and they too were wiped out to the man. Next he sent his infantry against the city gates, and they too were wiped out to the man. Having no other choice, he sent his cooks and supply troops against the gates of the city and the gates of the city fell, and the city was conquered. Well, the general went to see the king, expecting to see him celebrating the victory. But the king was not celebrating. He seemed confused. The general said, I thought that the king would be ecstatic about the victory. Well, the king questioned the outcome of the war. He said, are you going to tell me that my cooks and supply soldiers were my best troops? The general smiled and said to the king, no, your highness. 
The commandos did what they were supposed to do. The cavalry did what they were supposed to do. And the infantry did what they were supposed to do. After they had finished, you could have sent the Girl Scouts against the gates of the city and they would have succeeded. All that was needed was one more push. The massacre that was perpetrated on October 7th was horrific. Why would God Almighty allow such a tragedy to occur? Though no answer can stop the tears nor relieve the pain that we feel, but we as Jews have to believe with complete faith in what it states in Prikyovot, the ethics of the fathers. Rabbi Yaakov said that this world is only an antechamber to the banquet hall that is the world to come. Prepare yourself in this antechamber so that you may enter the banquet hall. We need to know with complete certainty that every one of the victims that died in the massacre died for the sanctification of God's name. There is no greater sacrifice that one can give to God than dying for Kiddush Hashem. They have all earned a very special place in the world to come, in paradise. When looking at science fiction, people are first depicted as small bodies with big heads. From there, they develop into beings with no bodies, just pure intellect. Think of it, the greatest form of torture is mental torture. On the other hand, the greatest pleasure that a person can experience is mental, that which exists in the mind. Our sages tell us that the miracles that will accompany the Messiah will be even greater than those miracles that God brought upon the Egyptians when he took the children of Israel out of Egypt. What if AI, artificial intelligence, is a major factor in the coming of the Messiah? What if AI really stands for absolute intelligence? Our bodies are what keeps us anchored to the earth. Without a body, we have the ability to soar up to the heavens. Psychologists tell us that very few people use more than 20% of their brain's capacity. We know that nothing that God created in this world is without purpose. So what are the other 80% of our brain needed for? What if the other 80% were given for us to allow us to perceive God Almighty on a much higher plane? What if... The only peace that is missing in the process of bringing the Messiah is our prayers, our tears, calling out to our Father in Heaven for His salvation. In my lifetime, I can't remember a time when so many Jews have turned to God for help and salvation. The demand for tzitzit, the fringe garment that Jews are commanded to wear, has been so overwhelming that Israel ran out and has asked other countries to send as many pairs of tzitzits as they can produce. I think that the world situation today is similar to the holiday of Hanukkah. You know, a moment in Jewish history that had the power to ignite the pintaliyid, that spark of godliness that resides within each and every Jew. That spark exploded into a bonfire that reunited the nation with each other and with God, their Father in Heaven. So too it is my hope and prayer that from the ashes of this horrific tragedy, that there should emerge once again a spark of divinity, a spark that has the power to burst into a raging fire, one that will reunite all Jews throughout the world together with God our Father in Heaven. You know, one of the greatest tragedies of the war in Gaza was the accidental killing of three Israeli hostages by the IDF soldiers. The mother of one of the men who was killed was interviewed on cable. She said that she bore no hatred or animosity towards the soldiers that had killed her son. She said that she would not have that they would not have to avoid her if they were to see her. In fact, she said that if they needed a hug, she would be more than happy to oblige. An example of true Abbas Yisro, of true love of your fellow Jew. So the bottom line, though it may seem highly improbable to many, the possibility of the arrival of the Messiah is real. But it can only occur if we do what God our Father in Heaven has requested of us in His Torah. Then the what if can turn into a reality, not just a wish. With our hostages released, all the injured cured, all mourners consoled, and all the brave soldiers return home safely with the coming of the Mashiach that came quickly and in our time. Again, let me thank you for attending. Um, again, our hearts and our prayers are with our brethren in Israel and throughout the world. 
Again, if there's anything that you can do, say some psalms, donate some money. Just talk positive. And again, with that, hopefully, we'll usher in the coming Mashiach Zakeno and help our brother and brethren in Israel through the plight that they're going through. Again, if you could uh, please push like on the video and, uh, again, subscribe and share. Again, it would be appreciated. Uh, after this video ends, again, there will be a musical rendition of original song that I've written. Again, God bless. Thank you very much for attending. Shabbat Shalom. Happy New Year.